So we're talking about linear systems. Remember the idea here is we're trying to solve the problem AX equals B. We know A and we know B. We don't know the vector X. We're looking for this. And we've gone through some ways to do this. We talked about Gaussian elimination, which we learned in linear algebra. And then last class, we saw that Gaussian elimination gives us this nice, if we pay attention to our multipliers, it gives us this nice factorization of A into LU. Why is it useful to have LU since we're, you know, we're doing this problem, we're doing this Gaussian elimination, we get an answer. It's extra work to remember L. Uh, so what do we get out of it? We're going to answer that question today. When we factor A into L and U, we're not manipulating B at all. We're not using B in our decomposition. We get L and U to solve this nice linear system, the two easy ones, one using forward substitution, one using back substitution. We didn't use B at all to get L and U over there. Okay? And the, that means that if B changes, which typically it does, typically you have this matrix A, you're looking for the vector X, and you have a whole bunch of Bs. Since the A equals LU decomposition is independent of B, it turns out that solving K linear systems is still only O of n cubed uh, when LU is used. So I said that the most important thing you'll learn in this class is never to invert a matrix. So let's write that on the board again. Never invert a matrix. simplest thing that you learn in the, in the first half of linear algebra. Order of n cubed. And this is order of n to the fourth before you even do this matrix vector product, which adds on a little bit more, but it's certainly not on the order of n to the fourth. But if n's a big number, like 10 to the 9, and some of the examples we've been talking about, that means you're doing a billion times more work to get x than you need to using naive gas elimination. So we've been talking about linear systems, solving them, and we alluded in the beginning to we alluded into the in the beginning to the fact that we're we're solving ax equals b but we don't get x we get x sub c the computed solution which is different from x and measuring that difference the computed solution minus the x that is the true solution that's something we can't do because we typically don't know the true solution that's why we're solving it in the first place and the big idea here is that We have solved exactly a slightly different problem than AX equals B. We have solved exactly the problem AX equals B plus R, which is the intersection of slightly different lines geometrically speaking, than the ones that we wanted to solve for. So the, the reason why we, uh, we talk about those norms is to get our, you know, our hands wet with matrices, but usually we talk about the two norm, which is the Euclidean norm, the distance vector. So you can think about that. You can think about these all having twos on them. That'd be fine. That's the one that comes most naturally, even though the matrix version of it is the most complicated. Essentially, this is saying that the spectrum of eigenvalues of a, of a matrix, in this case AA transpose, that spectrum tells you something about how easy it is going to be to solve the linear system. So if the eigenvalues are way far apart from each other, one's really big and one's really small, it's going to be very difficult to solve that system accurately.